Hello and welcome to Teach to Learn, the channel in which I teach concepts so you can learn them and I can better understand them. Right now we're going to be comparing the scopes of the var and let keywords in JavaScript. So when you declare a variable with the var keyword, it is declared globally or locally if declared inside of a function. The let keyword behaves similarly, but with some extra features. When you declare a variable with the let keyword inside a block statement or expression, its scope is limited to that block statement or expression. Very important. Let's keep an eye on that. I'm going to repeat it. When you declare a variable with the let keyword inside a block statement or expression, its scope is limited to that block statement or expression. Then we are provided with an example of variable num array assigned an empty array and declared with the var keyword. Then we have a loop, a for loop specifically, with our initialization statement declaring variable i and setting it to a, var a value of zero. Then our condition statement, as long as i is less than three, our ending statement, our final expression, will increment the i variable by one. So as long as i is less than three, our i variable, declared at the beginning, will be incremented by one. And inside our for loop, we have a block of code that our num array, while the for loop is executing, will be pushed the value of i to the end of it. And then we simply have num array being logged into the console. So our array being logged into the console and the i variable also being logged into the console. So here the console will display the values 0, 1, 2, and will display the value of i, which is 3. So it'll, it'll display an array of 0, 1, and 2, and our i value, which is 3. With the var keyword, i is declared globally. So i is declared globally. So when i++, plus plus, when i equals i plus 1 is executed, it updates the global variable. This code is similar to the following. So we then have our variable num array being declared with the var keyword and being set to an empty array. We then have variable i declared with the var keyword. We then have a for loop with the same conditions as presented above. So i is set to 1. But it is using this instance of the i variable because it has already been declared. So i is equal to zero. As long as i is less than three, i will be incremented by one. And our num array will be pushed the value of i to the end of it. And then we also log into the console our num array and our i variable. Here the console will also display the values of an array of zero, one, and two and our value of i, which is 3. This behavior, they say, will cause problems if you were to create a function and store it for later use inside a for loop that uses the i variable. This is because the stored function will always refer to the value of the updated global i variable. So this behavior will cause problems if you were to create a function and store it for later use inside a for loop that uses the i variable. This can simply cause problems because the, the functions and for loops and things that you use with the i variable will refer to the global values of the i variable. This is what they're saying right here. And then they have an example of just that. So they have variable print num2 simply declared with the var keyword. Then they have a for loop declaring variable i and setting it to zero. Our condition, which is as long as i is less than three and our, uh, and our final expression, excuse me, stating that i will be incremented by one when this condition is true. And then we have a nested if statement within that for loop, which states that if i is strictly equal to two, then our print num2 variable will be assigned a function with a block of code within it, telling our code to return the i variable. Then our print num2 function is logged into the console and we are returned a value of three. 
as you can see, print num2, this right here, prints 3 and not 2. This is because the value assigned to i was updated and the print num2 returns the global i and not the value i had when the function was created in the for loop. The let keyword does not follow this behavior. So before we move on to the let keyword, let me just explain what happened um, right here as plainly as I possibly can. So here we declared our variable print num2. Then we set our variable i to equal zero. And as long as i is less than three, our for loop will increment the i variable by one. And our if statement states that when i is strictly equal to two, our print num2 variable is assigned a function and returns the value of i. The problem here, and the problem with using the var keyword, is that our i variable was um, created globally. And it causes this for loop to firstly finish executing and then return the value of i. So what happened here was our for loop will run until i is no longer less than three. So our i variable started at zero, zero is less than three, then it incremented by one, one is less than three, then it incremented by one again, uh, two is less than three, and then it incremented one final time. So two plus one is three. Our, our i variable, our value for i, excuse me, is no longer less than three. So our function stopped executing. So when i reached two, our loop ran one final time, incrementing our i variable for the final time. And then our print num2 function returned our final value of i to us, which is three. So this reached two, then incremented by one, one final time. And this was no longer true and our code stopped. But our returned value for i was three instead of two. Hope you guys got that. We have a further explanation below. So then they say just that. Here the console will display the value three. And as you can see, print num2 prints three and not two. This is because the value assigned to i was updated and the print num2 returns the global i and not the value i had when the function was created in the for loop. So the loop ran through all the iterations of i, reached a value of three, and that was the value that we were returned because we used the var keyword and declared i globally. The let keyword does not follow this behavior. And then we have our example. So they, here in this example, they declared variable print num2 with the let keyword. They have the same exact for loop as above, but using the let keyword as well. So we have our variable i set to a value of zero using the let keyword as long as i is less than three is our conditional statement. And our final expression is i will be incremented by one as long as this condition is true. What's the major difference here? The let keyword declared our i variable for this loop specifically. It is only within the scope of this loop. And then we have our if statement, which states that as long as i so when i is strictly equal to two, our print num2 variable will be assigned a function with the following block of code, telling it to return the value of i, so our i variable. Then print num2, the print num2 function is logged into the console and the value of i, so our variable i is also logged into the console. Here the console will display the value two and an error that i is not defined. As I've stated before, i is not defined globally because it was declared with the let keyword and is only found within the scope of this for loop right here. i is not defined, then they say just that, because it was not declared in the global scope. It is only declared within the for loop statement. Print num2 returned the correct value because three different i variables with unique values 
0, 1, and 2 were created by the let keyword within the loop statement. So I just want to see this code in action with you guys real quick. So let's copy and paste this. We'll reset, we'll reset right now for the challenge. So as we can see right here, when we log this function that we assign to our printnum2 variable to the console, we get our value of 2. Because with the let keyword, it stops when i is strictly equal to 2 and returns to us the correct value of i. Then we move on to this instance of logging i into the console, and we get an error that i is not defined because our variable i was declared within our for loop using the let keyword. So we got that out of the way, and <clears throat> let's reset our code and move on to the challenge. So now we need to fix the code so that I declared in the if statement is a separate variable than I declared in the first line of the function. So we need to change our I variables declarations. So these two right here. And be certain not to use the var keyword anywhere in your code. This exercise is designed to illustrate the difference between how var and let keywords assign scope to the declared variable. When programming a function similar to the one used in this exercise, it is often better to use different variable names to avoid confusion. I concur with that. Yes. <laughs> All right. So firstly, let's log our check scope function into the console to see what it is currently doing. Check scope right there. So we have our function check scope and within it, a block of code that sets our variable I with the var keyword um, to a string of function scope. So if our function passes with a value of true, with a Boolean value of true, I will be assigned a value, a string value of block scope. We need to use the let keyword for this to be correct. And if this is also true, our console, uh, uh, sorry, this string value will be logged into the console with our I variable. So this block scope I is, and the value of I will also be printed into the console. So if not, if this is not true, then we will log into the console a string value of function scope i is, and the value of i will be logged into the console. So this i variable should be set to within the function scope, and this value for i should be set within the block scope. So we can do that very simply by using the let keyword. So let i equal function scope. And we also need to use the let keyword right here to set this i variable within our block of code. So now we have in the console block scope i is block scope, a string of block scope. So this is correct. And function scope i is and then we have our string of function scope. So we are now done with this challenge. And I, I really hope you could, you could see the differences between the let and var keywords and how their scopes and how they are declared affect what goes on in your code. So thank you so much for watching. This has been your bearded coding friend, Teach to Learn. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day.